I'm not going to go with this bus doing the return. Who is the real church later on? One of these days we'll all go to the real church. This is doing the return. We go to the big church later. Praise God. I'm glad to see all these kids here today. Thank God for you. Thank God for each and every one of you that's came our way this morning. We thank God for a visit. We thank God for a brother that came to sing for us. Brother, you like myself. We always do. Every time I've heard you thus far. You know what? God's good this morning. God's good to us this morning. He's blessed me in so many ways. I don't deserve any of it. I've never deserved any of it. I never will deserve any of it. But he gave it to me because he loved me. And I thank God for that this morning. Our brother was singing about the blood that I needed to go with. Uh, Brother Mark, our old guy, was kidding me. He said, his coat won't stay off. He's right. He won't. I can't stand with coat. He's got to go. But, uh, he was singing about the blood, and I started thinking, you know, I work in a hospital, and I, I realized the importance of blood. You know what? Blood can't be duplicated. Blood, out of all the technology that we have, we can't duplicate blood. Blood's made to carry. It's like you. It carries blood. It carries oxygen. It carries food. It makes the being live. Praise God. I want you to know something this morning. That precious blood of Jesus does the same this morning. It carries the oxygen that we need, the food that we need to survive. It carries what we need, the forgiveness that we've got to have to make it home one day. But that blood this morning, praise be to God, it's all important this morning. Thank be to Jesus that he shed his blood for me on time. I'm undeserving this morning. I'll stand here and tell you that, and I'll tell you that every day. But I can tell you something. My God is deserving. Amen. He's deserving the praise this morning. So if you would, if you'll turn with me, you know, we can do nothing without God. So as we stand this morning, uh, we ask you to pray for us as we try to preach God's word. And hopefully God will use us to preach what he would have to be preached. So if you would, this morning, turn with me to in your book of, uh, uh, your Bible, the book of John, chapter 14. We'll start out in the very first verse. You'll put it up there on the board for you guys. Uh, if you want to read it here. So as I was praying on what God would want me to preach, and as I thought and meditated on it, I started thinking about heaven. And I started thinking about home. And I started thinking about just how sweet it's going to be on a sweet day. So this is where God led me this morning. And if the Lord feel, I'm going to try my best to preach from here. It says, in chapter 14, in verse number 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, but believe also in me. Now, this writing's in red. This is Jesus talking, okay? He's talking to his disciples here. He says, In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, the there you may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way ye know. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Praise God, you may be seen. Yeah. Now, as I started thinking about this, there's going to come a day that we're going to see Jesus come back to get his children if we're alive and well. If not, we're going to go to meet him. We're going to stand before a holy God one day. A mighty God. Praise be to God that's worthy of praise this morning. We're going to stand before our Lord and our Savior one day. Or at least I pray it's your Lord and your Savior when you get there. Because all these is going to bow to him. But honey, some of us is going to get to go on in. And some of us he's going to look at and say, depart from me. I never knew you. Now I don't wish that on anybody. I don't want anybody in here to ever hear those words. But I started thinking about heaven. I started thinking about how great it is just to come home. Now, I love vacation. Don't let nobody get you. I love vacation. And my favorite place in the world to vacate is anywhere in a beach. I don't care where it's at. I ain't ever been to a beach I didn't like. I love the atmosphere of the beach. I love the water. I love the sand. I love the sun. Everything about the beach I love. Kim can tell you. If it was up to me, I'd almost move to the beach. But I got family here that I love very much, so I'm going to stay right here. But I love the beach. But you know what? The Lord will bless us sometimes when we get to go for a week sometimes during the summer on vacation. And during that week, I'm just so happy and carefree. And I don't know if it's because I'm just away from work or where I'm at the beach. But either which way, I'm happy. But you know what? Come that last day when we're driving home and everything's going through my mind. I've been off work for a whole week. I can't, I can't even imagine what's waiting on me when I get back to work. And that's what starts hitting me as I start rolling home. 
And I start thinking about how much I'm going to dread going back to what I got to go back to. But then, just when I think that it's getting as bad as it's going to get, I hit those mountains back in North Carolina and I start seeing those beautiful mountains come into view. And praise be to God, my soul starts lifting up again because I know that I'm almost home. I might love the beach to go visit. I might love that the while I'm there. But praise God, I got a home that's waiting for me over here that I can't wait to get to when I'm coming home. And them mountains remind me of that. And I started thinking about how that, honey, I got a home to go to when I leave this walks alive. I got a place, praise God, that hand didn't make. I got a place that my God and Savior spoke it into existence. I got a place, praise God, that my Lord Jesus resides at. That he sits on the right hand side of the Father. That he looks down and he watches over us. I got a place this morning that I'm going to go where there's no more sickness, praise God. We'll be without a job one day, brother, but that's all right with me. There's no more sickness in heaven. There'll be no more tears in heaven. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more, praise God, sadness in heaven. I got a home awaiting for me just over on the other side. Yeah. That praise God. It's much better than anything I can imagine down here. Now, I can tell you, there's some mighty fine homes down here. You can drive by and see mansions on the hills. Oh, heaven, show that I love to have, praise God. I'd love to be able to stay there. But I want you to know something this morning. I mean, those mansions down here, they pale in comparison, compared to the mansion that I'm going to own one day. My God made me a mansion. He made me a place to go to. And listen to what he says here. He said, let your heart not be troubled, he said in verse 1. I want you to know something. I've never seen a time like we're living in right now. I'm 49 years old as of about two weeks ago, and I've never seen a time like I'm living in in this time. You talk to people that's 80 years old, they'll tell you the same thing. I've never seen a time like we're living in now. When I graduated high school in 86, that's been a day or two ago. Graduated high school in 86. I never thought I'd turn the TV on and see a commercial that I didn't want my kids to watch. I never thought I'd turn the TV on and see woman kissing woman or man kissing man. I never thought I'd see that day. I never thought that I could hear the words that I hear on a regular TV set. It didn't have to be on those pay-per-view stuff. Just regular TV. I never thought I'd hear that. If there's ever a time, praise God, that I never thought I should, that I would have heard or seen, it's now. And if there's ever a time that your heart needs to be troubled, it's now. But look what Jesus tells his disciples. He was trying to comfort, comfort them. This word's just as good today as it was then. It's the same God that spoke But now look what he said. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. He said, believe also in me. He told him, he said, look, I know that he's paraphrasing. He's like, I know that it's bad. I know that you're worried. And I'll tell you the same thing here. I know it's bad sometimes. And I know you're worried. Don't let your heart be troubled this morning. Don't be your heart. Let your heart be troubled. We have a Savior that looks down from heaven that loves you this morning. And if you know him as your personal Savior, honey, you know more, praise God, than you'll ever be able to obtain in this world physically. And honey, in this world, don't make any difference. The finances in this world don't make any difference. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're rich, praise God, beyond measure this morning. Beyond measure. Don't let this world trouble you. Don't be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, he said. In my father's house are many mansions. Now I was raised up in the old man. Most of you know where that's at. If you don't, you can close your eyes and miss it. It's just a little turn off, a little hall goes up in there. I was kidding with one of them a while ago. I told them, I met them in the aisle. They had to back up for me. I told them to sit around me home. If you're driving up my holiday, you need to make them back up. This is where it is. Roll them up, number two. I lived in a house that I was raised in a house my dad lived. My dad was with his bare hands. Was always proud of that. Wasn't a mansion. But it's a nice house. Dad built it. But I'm going to live this walks alive. And I'm going to go to a house that my father did. I'm going to a house that human hands ain't messed with. They ain't never been a nail broke in the wall. They ain't never been a picture hung on it. God put it all where he wanted it. It's all right there. And it's waiting on his children. And you think about this for a minute. 
He said, if I go to prepare a place for you. Now, he's gone to prepare a place for those that are his this morning. He's gone. He left well, over 2,000 years ago. And he went to prepare a place. I mean, you. You think about this just for a second. You let your mind go there with me. He went to prepare a place for you. He knows exactly what you what your mansion should look like, brother. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly where you're going to spend most of your time in the mansion. He knows exactly how he wanted to keep a picture hung on the wall. He knows exactly how he wanted to lay whatever you stand up on. He knows exactly how he wanted it all to look. And he went to prepare a place for you this morning. If you need this. He said, if I go and prepare this place for you, I'll come back and receive you. Now this is where it starts getting good. Now we know that our Lord Jesus leaves. There's not probably anyone in here that I could question that they didn't believe that Jesus Christ walked on the face of this earth. There's not anyone hardly in here I believe that. I could question that. They didn't believe that Jesus Christ died for them on Calvary. It's an historical thing. It happened. There was a man named Jesus that walked this earth. There was a man named Jesus that was hung on a cross <laughs> that bled his life's blood for me and you. And on that third morning, after they believed in that Sunday, he arose. It happened, folks. It's real this morning. He's real. Now, let's think about that. Let's put it on the stick. If we know he's real, we know he was here, we know he died on Calvary, we know on that third morning that the song rolled away, he come forth, and he ascended back into heaven. We know that he's on the right hand side of the Father. And he's looking down like an intercession for me and you. And we know those things. If we know those things, then we also know just what he just told us. That he's going away to make a perverse place for us. And that he's coming back again. And he's going to get us to receive us under that place. Think right about that just for a minute. There's going to come a morning, a day, a night, whatever it may be. How many of y'all have woke up Friday night by that thunder? Anybody? I'm telling you, when I lay down at night, I think I'm physically dead. I don't know what happens to me. I just literally die, I think, until the next day. But I can promise you, that thunder won't be up. That thunder rattled my windows in my house. I wouldn't go and heal anyone. It rattled windows in my house, and I never heard thunder like that thunder. I don't think in my life. It shut the doors in my house. I thought, what in the world is this? There's going to come a day, folks. There's going to come a day when Jesus is going to step out. To give his children. There's going to come a day, praise God, when he's coming back to get his. And it's going to happen just the way that thunder rolled in, praise God. All of a sudden, it'll be quiet as a mouse. And all of a sudden, boom! And everything you know is up. All this is done. Wherever you stand, you'll stand. Wherever you lay, you lay. If you're in your sins, you'll be buried in your sins. If you're ready to go, you'll be found ready to go. Come on, boy. Now, where are you going to be this morning? It's just a fact it's the fact that Jesus is going to be that we can play church all day long. We can walk in heaven and hell with one foot on one and one on the other, like I said the other day. You can do that all you want, praise God. But there's coming a day when it's all going to come to an end. And where are you going to stand? Where's that foot going to be planted? <coughs> now, I preach this because I love it. He came and died for you because he loved you. I preach this because I don't want to see him one left. I preach this because it's the sure as I'm here this morning. I don't know what's coming back. I don't know the time now. I don't know. The Bible says angels in heaven don't even know. But we know for a fact it's going to happen. The rest of it is historically true. We know we can prove it, we can track it. He was here, it happened. We know for a fact. In here, you got a whole other way of knowing that it's right. Because you got something in the inside of you. You got Jesus Christ that resides right here. And you know without a doubt that he's alive and well. You know without a doubt this morning that he's coming back to get you one day. Now you think about it. And so I've heard this preach since I was a little kid. 
I'm 80 years old. Well, I can tell you you're 80 years closer to seeing Christ come back. It's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I can't say I'll see it in my lifetime, but I can't hardly imagine that I won't. If I look at the world, I can't hardly imagine that I won't. But he said that he would come back and he's going to prepare a place for you. And in verse number 3 it says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, the there you may be also. Now we know he resides in heaven. So he's talking about taking you home to heaven once we go. Now you imagine that. Now you think about just standing around outside. I don't know what time of day it'll be. But you think that we're just standing outside. And all of a sudden, he steps out on the clouds, praise God, they call it sugar home. And the graves start bursting open. And one by one, he wants the soul to rise out of the grave bar. Think about it. He said the dead Christ shall rise first. Think about this. You watch those old saints come rolling out of the grave bar. I never tell you something. For the ones of us that know what's coming next, we're all over here excited. And for the ones of us, praise God, that don't know him as our Savior, man, you're talking about running and going to hide. We do want to find some place to crawl under. If I start watching graves open and souls come forth out of them, I ain't never seen that in my 49 years. But I can tell you right now, I'd be finding some place to hide if I didn't know what was coming next. But for those of us that say, we know what's coming next. Right after that happens, we're going to lift up. Woo! Let me tell you something. We're going to lift up and we're going to meet him in the air. And praise be to God, this mortality is going to put on immortality. This flesh is going to be replaced, praise God. This sinful nature is going to go away. And we're going to be what Christ made it for us to be in the beginning. We're going to be exactly what he made it for us to be. One sweet day, you'll see this. If you don't see it, you say, well, I don't know. People preach this since God only knows when. We ain't seen it yet. Okay, well, let me put it on your terms then. One sweet day, it may not be so sweet, but one day you're going to close your eyes for the last time. You're either going to lay down and go to sleep one night and never wake up. You're going to be driving down the road in a car, accident. You're going to have heart attack, stroke. I don't want to impress people. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do that at all. I just want you to open your eyes and realize it doesn't take this whole world to end for your world to end. And it still equates the same thing. You're still going to stand in front of a holy God. And the Bible says that you're going to give an account. Man. An account for what you've done. Every knee of bow and every tongue will confess. You will give an account of what you've done here or what you didn't do here. And that's what's going to get you more than what you've done here. See, you can do whatever you want to do here. And then one day, sweet day, Jesus calls to you and you get saved and he washes it all away. And that blood covers it over. You might be the biggest scoundrel that ever lived. You may be the worst person that ever was. And get saved and you obey your Christ. Whole new world. Whole new day. Now people may still remember the old scoundrel that you was. People still may have in their mind that they can take who you are. But you and Jesus will not be. And one sweet day you're going to stand in front of him. Those that are saved. And he's going to look at you. He's going to say, welcome in. The faithful over of you. Whew. Come on in, praise God. Can you imagine what that day's going to be like? Now you think about this just for a second. In my mind, it's a hard time with you. It has a hard time imagining the splendor of heaven. But my mind never could imagine what being saved was either until I bowed me and got saved one time. Amen. See, I always thought when I got saved, that I'd be perfect <coughs> They never know that thought hit my mind. I thought that, I don't know, I just walked around perfect. I realized 15 years, 16 years later now, ah, no, it wasn't right. But the one who saved me is perfect. He's given me his mercy and his grace. He's covered my flaws with his perfectness. Does that make sense to anybody in here? See, I never, nobody can explain to me what being saved was either. Until I got saved. Now I know what being saved is. Being saved is preservation. Being saved is to persevere, praise God, no matter what. You're going to fall, you're going to trip. But the ones who lose is the ones that raise the air and don't get back up. The ones who win clings on to the telephone of Christ, praise God, and pulls back up. That's what I know about salvation now. And I know that I got a God that's going to. Forgive me when I come back. That's what I know about salvation. <clears throat> but I didn't know what salvation was.
Moses go to God say, I can't tell you that you know what heaven is until you make it there one day. But through faith and through my love and understanding of Jesus Christ, reading of his word, I know that if you're a child of his, you're going to make it there one day. Through faith and faith. It's real. <laughs> it's just as real as you drive it home after this service and go to your house. Except one day you're going to go to a much better house. And I don't know what you live in. But I can tell you it ain't going to burn. Can you imagine being in a place where there's no stress? <coughs> I was a few weeks ago. He told me, he told me, he said, son, stress is killing you. Maybe that stress. Oh, that's fine. I go home to work for a while, leave the kids, quit the job. Should be back. I'll do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't do that stuff. We gotta leave right now. But can you imagine one day you're gonna go to a place where there's no stress? There's no need for money. There's no need for worry. There's no need for any of that. There's no sickness. No hospitals. No wars. There's gonna come a day when we get to go again. If you're a child of God. Now, I can tell you right now, what little bit I can ever do on this side ain't going to amount to nothing compared to what he's done for me. Not one drop. I'm not worthy of one drop of that precious blood. Not one little drop am I worthy of. But he made it. <coughs> There's going to come a day, folks. Jesus is going to step out. He's going to come back to get his kids. He's going to come back to get his children. It says in verse number four, it says, And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Well, Thomas is just like me. He's like, Lord, I don't know where you're going. I don't know how to get there. <coughs> I don't know where I'm going. How in the world do I know how to get there? He said, Look what he told you. Jesus said unto him, I am that way. I am that way. You know me. You don't know how to get into heaven, but you know me. I am that way into heaven. I am the truth. No matter what this world tries to feed you, I am the truth. And I am the life. And no one will go in except I prove my name. No one. You already got the way this morning. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you say, well, wait a minute, I, I don't know this man. I've been taught about him. I, I, I believe he's real, but I don't know him. Good day. Good day, sir. Get to know He's there. He wants to know you. He already doesn't know you. He wants to save your son. He wants to wash you from He wants to pick you up from whatever ditch you're in. And he wants to raise you up and set you on your feet. And he wants to clean you up. And he wants to dust you off. And he wants to hold you in heaven. And he wants to love you. And he wants to pour in the inside of you what he poured out on that precious cross. He wants to pour that precious life giving blood in the inside of your veins this morning. In the inside of your heart. And let your heart start circulating something besides the will that it circulated all these years with this world. <coughs> and he wants to show you what being clean is. You know, something about being clean, brother. I love that song. Love that song. No matter how dirty you are. How dirty are you in here this morning? I was dirty. I was dirty. I was not I was not addicted to drugs. I, I wasn't an alcoholic. I, I didn't mess around with my wife. I, in this world of Alice, I was a decent guy. I'm dirty. Oh, Lord. Lord, I still Face, it don't look a lot better. Step and look at it in the mirror, it's getting older every day. They ain't a hard one to grow back. Okay, it ain't going back. It's got them. But there's something in the inside of me that he changed that day that no matter where I am, I can go with him. That no matter what I'm doing, I think about it. He instilled his love in me. That give me love for people that I never thought I could love. I told you all before, I, I need to clean Xbox inside of me one more life. We watch TV, I cry more than she does. 
He gave me a soft heart. Soft heart. That used to have bothered me if somebody would have told me, I feel proud of you. Not more. I cry. I know the reason why I cry. See, for Christ, I can cry and laugh all the same time. I know what he meant to me. I know how he wants me to Then Now you think about that. He says he's going back to get us. And turn just for a second. Look, look, 21st chapter of Luke, the 25th verse. And it says, Now there shall be signs in the sun. Now he's talking about when he comes back. See, there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear. And looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Now you tell me you ain't, you ain't seeing all this stuff happen. For the powers of heaven shall be shed. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Look at number 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption. We can preach it all day long. I can tell you about it all day long. But there's going to come a day, honey, when you're going to look out and you're going to see this stuff happen and your redemption draw nigh. Look up, because that's where your redemption comes from. Look up, praise God, because that's where he's coming to get his children. Look up, praise God, because I hope that's where you're going. Look up, praise God, for whatever you're doing. Get your mind where it needs to be. I want you to know something. Honey, don't wait until the last minute, though, to take your eyes off of this sinful world and try to put it up on something holy. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. But there'll come a day when you'll see all these come to pass. And you say, look up for your redemption. You're all You get ready to be called out. Think about this for just a second. When Jesus comes and gets his children, there'll be airplanes flying to go out. Cars are going to have a road to go out. There'll be things that we can't even imagine. There'll be congregations that sit in their church and hopefully their pastor will be on. You'll be watching, you'll be sitting in a congregation. Think about this. You may find all awesome. You think about the ones that still going to be saved. The other ones are still going to be in that plane. The other ones are still going to be in that car. The other ones are still going to be in the shoes. Think about it for a minute. That's from my job. That's what we do way to do it. Make your way now, folks. Don't wait too late. So why I'm ashamed, I, I'm embarrassed to come up in front of all these people. You close your eyes and you forget about these people being here. Because they're not going to be here when you stand before Jesus. It's going to be you and him. You and him. You need to make that greater you don't. Know? Going to heaven and you depart from him to be there with you. Let me ask you this morning where do you stand with Christ this morning? I don't care if you've been a member of this church for 50 years <clears throat> or if this is the first day you've ever walked through the door. Where do you stand with Christ? Being a member of this book, having your name written on this book in this church will not get you to heaven. I don't know one to think that it will. But there is a book. Book of life that your name must be written. And the only way to get written in that is through my Jesus Christ. He is the way that truth is on. So I don't care how long you've been at this church. Where is your soul going to remain for the rest of your life? For the time? Now only you and Jesus can answer that. I can. But I want you to think about that this morning. We're getting ready to call our brother back up. I'm going to let him come back up. He's going to do us an altar call, son. 
As we get ready to close, you might be everybody stand before everybody this morning. There's coming a day when those of us who say you're going to see your heavenly home. But there's coming a day that if you're not saved and ready to go, that you're going to be looked at and told to depart. They never do. You say that's harsh. It is. It is. Think about it that way it is. But he's given you every opportunity. He's given you the mercy and the grace. He made the way. He's done everything it takes for salvation. All you've got to do is accept it. Just accept it. Whenever you're ready, brother, go ahead. Listen to our brother as he sings this.
I can tell you that you don't have to be in a church to be saved. If God spoke to you so, you'd be saved wherever you are. If you're driving down the road, in your closet, God's everywhere. Please, please, please don't let the safe win. It's a bad thing. It's a You've got to win this one. Don't let it get you out of salvation. So I love you and I thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you for coming our way. Thank you for coming to the scene for us today. You're an awesome job, brother. Thank each and every one of you. Uh, at this time, I guess we'll be dismissed. Brother Damien, dismiss us in a word of prayer, please. Well, it's kind of gracious to have me follow the Lord. Come to be with you. Thank you for all these people.